Hello everyone and welcome to a new Unity tutorial about using custom animation events to trigger precisely time callbacks. By the end of this video, we'll have this little karate man who will be able to punch when we press the left mouse button and kick when we press the right mouse button, with at some specific moments throughout the animations the appearance of special effects to put emphasis on the actions. As usual, don't forget that you can get all the code and assets for this tutorial on my GitHub over here. And with all that said, it's time to dive in and see how to use these animation events. Before we talk about the animation events per se, let's first take a bit of time to properly set up our scene. For this demo, I'll use a 3D model I made a while ago and that I dragged into Adobe Mixamo's Autorigger to directly add a skeleton and animate it. This allowed me to easily get a few punch moves for my character and then re-import all of those as FBX files into my Unity project. In terms of import settings, the idea is the following. For one of the FBX assets, for example the base idle animation, we need to go to the Rig tab and tell Unity to create an avatar based on this model, and apply the changes. This will create a new sub-asset inside our FBX file that we can see over here, that is a humanoid avatar. That unique type of object is a handy tool that Unity provides us with for creating a highly detailed layout for our character's bones that can even be used for retargeting a slightly different skeleton or for adding inverse kinematics. Here we don't need all of those advanced options, so we'll just leave the defaults as is. But by the way, you can also click this optimization option to avoid exposing all the transforms of the bones in the hierarchy and improve the performance of the object. Then for other FBX assets, in the same rig tab, we'll tell Unity to copy the avatar from another model, and drag and drop the avatar sub-asset that we just created. This way we are sure that all the animations on our character rely on the same skeleton, and thus are consistent. Finally, we have to go to the animation tab for the different FBX assets and rename the animation clips in this field to better organize our project. Plus, we also have to enable the loop time parameter for the idle animation. Again, don't forget to apply changes each time you modify something. Alright, we now have a simple Cavity Man model with a rig and animations. The last step is to actually trigger those animations at runtime thanks to an animator controller asset. We'll create a new one in our project, name it Carity Man Controller, and then drag it in the animator component of our model. Then we'll double click on it to open the animator editor. So the Unity animator assets rely on a basic state machine. Each possible animation is a state in this graph, and we can create links between them to transition from one animation to the other. In our case, at the moment, we have three animations. The idle, the punch, and the kick. So let's open up our FBX file assets and drag each of our animation sub-assets into the animator editor. This instantly creates three new states in the state machine that each correspond to one animation. We also have to make sure that the idle animation is the default state, the one shown in orange that is linked to the entry point and that will be played by default when we run the scene. Now we can go over to the parameters tab on the left and create two new trigger parameters called punch and kick. These are variables that we can set from our code when we click the left and right mouse buttons and that we will use to transition from idle to punch or from idle to kick, as the condition of the transition. Note that because we want the change to be fairly instantaneous, we should lower the exit time to zero and the transition time to something like 0.1. Finally, we'll make another transition from punch to idle and from kick to idle and leave them with the default parameters, so that when the punch or the kick animation is finished, our character goes back to idle. We can already test what all of this looks like by running our game, selecting our character model, be sure to select the game object that has the animator component on it, and by looking at our animator editor. You see that for now, the character is indeed using its idle animation in an endless loop. But if we go and click on these little circles next to our punch or kick trigger variables, then the stage transition activates and the character runs its punch and kick animations once before returning to idle. 
But of course, we don't want to throw punches like this. By having to open the animator editor and manually clicking on these activators. Instead, we want to link those to the mouse clicks. So to finish this setup, let's create a new C-Sharp script in our project, called Caratiman Manager, and put it on our game object. Then inside the script, we'll remove the startup code, and instead we'll create a reference to our animator component. Because it's on the same game object as our script, we can actually leave the variable private, for better data encapsulation, and assign it in the awake function thanks to Unity's getComponent built-in method. Finally, inside the update function, we'll check to see if we've just pressed the left mouse button, and if so call the setTrigger method on our animator to transition from idle to punch. This line is equivalent to us manually clicking the little circle next to punch trigger variable in the animator editor earlier. And we can obviously do the same for the right mouse button, triggering the kick animation. So now if we run our scene, we see that as soon as we click the mouse buttons, our character indeed goes from idle to punch, or from idle to kick, and then eventually resets to idle mode. In a real game, we'd probably need to make sure that the character is not already punching or kicking, but here we'll leave it at that and shift gears to deal with our main topic of the day, using custom animation events. Alright, our character is now ready and punching, so time to get to the core of our tutorial and discuss animation events. To put it simply, this tool is a way to embed little triggers inside an animation clip and call specific functions at precise timings, so as to perfectly match the reaction to the animation. For this first example, we're going to start slow and see how to use those events to print some debugs all throughout the punch animation. In order to add events to an animation, this animation asset has to be editable. However, for now, because our animations are sub-assets directly inside our FBX files, they are read-only. Moreover, because we've optimized our FBX rig structure, we can't edit the clips. If we open the animation editor window and select our character model, we see that we can't modify anything. To solve this issue, the first trick is to simply duplicate our animation sub-assets into real standalone animation assets inside our project. Then we'll go back to our animator editor, and in the punch and the kick animation states, we'll replace the previous animations with the new read and write versions in the inspector panel. Then we'll also go back to our idle FBX file and toggle the optimization setting back off. It's interesting to know that it's there, but in our case, it cannot actually be used. Anyway, now, if we reselect our character and look at the animation window, we see that we have a dropdown with the various animations on this model, and our punch and kick clips are now marked as editable. So for example, we could go to the punch clip and change the keyframes to our liking. Except that, of course, this is not what we want here. The animation is just fine. What we want to do is use this button at the top to insert new events in our animation timeline. Basically, just by scrubbing through the animation to a specific moment and clicking this little button, we see that we can add an event marker at this precise time. And in the inspector, with this marker selected, this event can be linked to a callback function, which we can pick among the functions in the scripts that are currently present on this game object. So let's go back to our Carity Man Manager class and add a new public void function named callback1. In here, we'll just do a debug that says debug1. And while we're at it, we'll copy this function twice and do some variations to have a bit more examples to play with. Then back in the Unity editor, let's select our event marker in the animation window and in the inspector, associate our callback1 function to this event. Now if we restart a game and left-click to throw a punch, we see that when the arm gets all the way forward and we reach the specific point in the animation, we do get a debug one in the console. Similarly, we could add a few other events in our animation timeline that use the other callback functions in our Karate Man Manager script, and then we'd get multiple debugs each time our character runs through its punch animation. Okay, so that's really nice. We've now got a basic idea of how to set up custom animation events in an animation asset to trigger our own callbacks. But debugs are a bit underwhelming, so let's see how to use this technique to add some cool VFX to our karate punch. 
For this final part, I'll be using some cool VFX from Jean Moreno's free cartoon FX Remastered collection. That's available for free on the asset store at this link. More precisely, I've isolated the assets that are related to the CFXR hit A red prefab. That looks like this. So the goal would be to have this VFX appear when our hero throws the bench, but not right when the animation starts of course, because that would look a bit weird since the movement first anticipates the bench and starts by going backwards. We want the VFX to trigger when the fist is going forward again, and follow the course of the hand. To do this, all we have to do is use an anchor point on the fist to precisely follow the movement of the right hand. So let's go to our Karate Man Manager and create a new public transform variable to reference our anchor. We'll also create a public game object variable to reference our VFX prefab. Then we'll go back to the editor and drag and drop the right hand bone transform and the VFX prefab from the cartoon FX package in the inspector. Finally, back in the code, let's replace our test callback functions by one that is more aptly named, something like show VFX for example and that instantiates the VFX prefab inside the anchor point, meaning that this transform is its parent. This way the VFX will directly follow the hand thanks to parenting, and we can call this show VFX callback just at the right time by creating an event in our animation and linking it as the callback function. Note that I'll also remove the other test events from before to clean up my animation timeline. And here we are! If we play the game and throw bench, we see that the VFX only appears after a while once the arm has started going forward again. We could of course use the same technique to do other nice effects, or set up a VFX on the kick animation as well. If you're curious to see how it works in detail, remember that you can always have a look at the GitHub. But anyway, there you have it. In a few minutes, we've set up an easy to tweak trigger for VFX that is directly linked to our animation timeline and that precisely times this callback according to the movement of our hero. And the nice thing is that this callback could obviously do a lot more than just create a VFX. It could deal some damage to the opponent, play a sound, check the whole screen, and more. But here we're gonna stop there. So that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned a few things to setting up animated characters in Unity and using custom animation events with c -sharp scripting, if you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have other ideas of Unity tricks that you'd like to learn, don't hesitate to leave a comment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.